Well, so like I told you in today's Diwali special, we have a banker who posted a cracker set of Q2 numbers. We have Amitabh Chaudhary, Managing Director and CEO of Axis Bank. Uh, well, I said it was a pataka result because I think Axis was the only bank, large bank, to have posted a higher margin than in the previous quarter. Every other large bank, and the comparison will run for you, uh, did show a fall in margin, some of them even to the extent of 25 basis points. Also, the fall in gross NPAs for Axis was much more than for comparable banks. So, without much ado, welcome Amitabh. Uh, and uh, many congratulations for a great set of numbers. Okay, let me, let me start with the uh, bread and butter questions first. Uh, credit offtake, excellent loan growth at 23%, both overall as well as retail. Now, you've seen the festive season demand, you've seen the Diwali demand. Do you think Q3 will do better? Uh, firstly, Lata, wishing you and your team members a very, very happy Diwali. Thanks a lot for uh, coming to come here. Uh, yes, well, there are strong signs that the economy grew stronger than 7% in real terms in the September quarter, and the momentum has continued thereafter. We are seeing, if you look at some specific sectors, cement, construction demand, power demand. I mean, there are very clear signs that some of these things are picking up. Profit growth for the corporates in the second quarter has been strong. And this is happening despite the economy facing fiscal and monetary headwinds. So from my perspective, while and RBI is keeping liquidity tight, likely due to global uncertainty and global shortages, my view is that the credit offtake will continue at the similar pace as what we have seen in the past. Some banks are growing at a faster pace. But at the same time, and in the same breath, I have to mention that the deposit growth continues to lag. It has been tough. Most of the deposit growth is coming in the form of term deposits rather than CASA. You saw... CASA dropped for most of the banks um, in the second quarter. And if this gap continues, at some stage, this gap does need to be bridged. So we cannot have a situation where credit growth just keeps, you know, uh, being ahead of the deposit yeah. growth for a long period of time. At some stage, they do need to converge. And my only worry is that if they don't converge, then we'll, we'll be forced to converge again. Uh, otherwise, the economy seems to be doing all the right things. And uh, from that perspective, the prospects look bright. Okay, well, actually, then let me upgrade the deposit question that was uh, anyway going to come. Uh, you did about 17.5-18% in terms of deposit growth. Now, obviously, last quarter, there was this one big bank which was aggressively picking up deposits and you also had the ICRR uh, imposition. So, deposits went through a challenging quarter. Now, will you go aggressively after deposits? I mean, and if that happens, uh, what, what is the target, internal target, and what does it do to margins? Uh, well, Lada, we are trying to balance a number of things at the same time. One is that obviously deposit is the starting base for everything. So we have to get the deposit growth right. At the same time, we want to ensure that we do it profitably. You want to ensure that the limbs are maintained. Third, if you go aggressively after deposits, you are in a way spoiling the entire you know, your liability franchise by making them fall into a habit of waiting for that extra aggression to go and get and source deposits. That's not the right way to build a long-term franchise. And actually, Axis has been trying very hard to move to a state where, you know, on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, we sustain what we do rather than do these one-off things which then come to hurt us later on. So from our perspective, it's a bit of a balance. Balance on one side where CASA is difficult, Term deposits, especially the retail, yes, are growing at a faster pace, but we need to ensure that they don't come at too high a price. We don't want to rely too much on borrowings and wholesale deposits. And at the same time, we would also like to maintain NIMS. At the same time, we would like to capitalize on the growth, the credit growth, which is available in the marketplace. It's a fine balance. We obviously are watching the numbers on a daily basis. We have some medium-term plans in mind. We have some, obviously, short-term. We have to react to what is happening in the market. So I'm giving you a long answer. And, and, and uh. if I was to give a one-line answer, it's not a, a simple answer. It's a complex answer. And <laughs> the answers does differ a little bit uh, depending on how the market plays out. So from that perspective, um, we are just trying to find the right balance. And, and I think our numbers in the last quarter reflect that. We mm. we have obviously our price uh, deposits price much faster than some of the others, and mm. we were able to do a number of things on our cost of fund side and on the yield side, which allowed us to bring the margins up a little bit. It is a constant, uh, you know, battle in that sense. No. And at the same time, we were able to deliver a good credit growth. But okay, let me let me tell you to a number there. Yeah, Sorry. exactly. Th that was going to be my question. You know, it, it, balancing so much is not easy for a very long time. 
So, uh, do you think you'll, you will be... Uh, how much will the margin crunch be in the current quarter or for FY24? Will you, will you have to give away 10, 20, 30 basis points? Well, we believe that the marginal cost of funds has broadly stabilised. We expect deposits cost, however, to increase further over the remaining part of the financial year. But the pace of deposit cost growth, we believe, will most likely moderate. Uh, see, from a guidance perspective, that's why we have been quite careful. We have said that uh, our margin guidance is 3.8%. We have built a cushion of 30 basis points over that. Okay. And our endeavor would be to retain as much of that cushion as possible, led by multiple structural drivers we're working on, both on the yield side and the deposit side. So I don't want to give a guidance, but I only want to say that our real effort uh, all this while has been to ensure that we keep this cushion as much as possible, though there are various variables which are moving and come moving quite rapidly. Okay. All right. Now, let me come back to the loan growth story because there I want to uh, get some more detailed questions, answers from you. You know, while retail credit also grew by 23%, your personal loans and credit card have grown by 39%. Now, the RBI itself has, you know, put that on the table in the monetary policy statement saying they are worried about personal loans and these would be unsecured uh, loans. Yes. So, are you consciously bringing it down? So on the credit card side, the uh, significant growth you're seeing is because of the base effect. We did not have city in the last year numbers, and we have city credit card numbers in this year. So credit card growth is good, but it's not as large as it seems because, you know, the year to year comparison has city missing in one of them. Yes, the personal loan growth was uh, um, quite reasonable and we're quite happy with it. It is one of the key drivers of credit growth. Uh, while the normal PL has grown by 2x in the last two years, I mean, you know that the small PL has grown by four times uh, in the last uh, two years. If you look at, uh, you know, uh, Access Bank, 85% of our growth is coming from existing to the bank customers. We have not seen any... Uh, this is the way we are growing and the reason we are growing is not because we are changing our risk guard rates. The reason we are growing is we are stacking our customer segments differently. We are attacking some of the distribution channels where our presence has been limited. We are asking and improving the customer journeys and the distributor journeys. So it is all about making your business more seamless to the customers and to the distributors rather than doing anything and changing okay. anything on the risk side. So we are not taking additional risk. Yes, okay. because others seem to be taking additional risks, we have to be watchful of what we are doing. So we are watching yeah. our portfolio very, very closely for any signs of stress. We are not seeing that, but we are fully cognizant of what the governor and RBI has been indicating okay. for the last couple of quarters, that they are worried about the rapid growth in personal loans and some of the okay. uh, stress they are seeing in the system. And we are also watching it closely and obviously sharing some of that data with RBI. Uh, okay, right if you now, can share, as I said, yeah, if you can share something, no, I get it. If you can share something with us, I'll tell you why. Because Chola Mandalam, when they did their conference call, they specifically said that their new segment loans have shown a higher NPA of 4%. And loans that originated from fintechs have, over a 12-month period, shown a low, uh, uh, NPA of 10% plus. So, I mean, do you all have fintech originating loans in your bank? Have you done that kind of granular detail to be sure that you won't have an unsecured loan shock? So, uh, Lata, we monitor our loan portfolio across partners, across customer segments, across geographies, across loan sizes. All the cuts are done, right? And as I said, we have not seen any major concerns. As yet. We have, amongst the larger banks, we have the largest number of, you know, fintech partnerships. And we have two large fintech partnerships where we are doing PLs. We are not seeing any sign as yet. But then, you know, let me immediately add a disclaimer clause there. We have been very clear that we will do the underwriting. And we are applying the same underwriting standard. Standard does not matter if it is a DSA or a fintech or it is our you know loans which are being originated by our own sales force. So in that sense, uh, yes, sometimes the data which is available is different. Sometimes you you need to use a different data set to mm. reach the same conclusion. But we are not changing our underwriting standards at all because it's a fintech. It's just a source of a customer for us. So in that sense, we are not seeing a difference. That does not mean that the difference will not emerge. But my worry is, and I, I don't know with the specific data about Chola, but obviously I know about this 10% uh, data point which you mentioned, that maybe in some of the fintechs which they have a partnership with, maybe, I don't know, uh, that uh, the underwriting or the way the underwriting is being done or the way the growth is happening maybe has uh, happened at a pace where uh, some of these loans have gone uh, bad. Maybe the size of the loans is quite small. And I'm sure knowing Chola, they'll be taking corrective actions around it. We have not seen anything as yet. 
that is very reassuring that, uh, you know, you, you, you're also privy to all this data and you are already doing that kind of granular uh, underwriting. Now, just one more piece of worry. Maybe I'm connecting the, un uh, the uh, you know, the two unconnected things. But we have seen a growth in equity derivative volumes. Uh, there was that excellent report from your mutual fund. Now, uh, separately, there are these personal loans growing. Uh, is there any doubt in your mind that personal loans are being used uh, to, you know, take punts in the equity derivative market? If that is, are you looking at, you know, when you give a loan, where it is being spent? Is it going to depositories? Is some such um, uh, trailing being done? Well, if you look at the growth in volumes on the derivative side, it is, it is alarming. And we also know that data very clearly shows to us, it has been publicized quite well, that 95% of the people lose money. And yeah. we are also seeing signs that some of the employees generally broadly in the banking system are resorting to uh, wrong practices because they have uh, drawn up debt at a very, very rapid mm -hmm. pace. And in, in some of those cases, it is around betting or let's say taking positions on derivatives or whatever they might be doing. Uh, because, you know, why have all these betting companies and why some of the, uh, you know, uh, derivatives have prospered so much? Someone is obviously taking some risk. And if yes. everyone is losing money, they're paying for it. Uh, no, we, I, and that's why the kind of customers you're lending to and the profiling of the customers you do is very, very important. As we said, 85% of our lending is to existing to the bank customers. We do obviously monitor the transactions that are happening in those accounts. We also look at the profile of the customers. We also look at their, uh, you know, what is the leverage they have, how many loans they're taking, what they're doing about it. So it's a constant process. It is not that they give a loan and then forget about it. And yes, we are monitoring it. It is a worrisome sign. That's why our mutual fund came out with it, that, you know, this is something which is happening, which should be looked at. Uh, because, uh, you know, end of the day, if I run up debt, something will happen. Something has to give. Uh, and us, it will impact the system broadly at some stage. Maybe that's why some of the uh, statements and the commentaries coming from RBI also. So let me just say that we are watching it very carefully. Yes. Okay. Well, just a final question on credit cost. Even that's fallen admirably for you, more than it has fallen for other banks. Uh, is this the best you will do or is there scope to do even better? So, Lada, we have been tightening our underwriting and credit standards over the last uh, five years. And obviously, what you're seeing today is a result of all the belt tightening that has happened. Uh, in my view, we have been saying again for the last couple of quarters that this is some of the historical lows you have seen for the banking system. It would uh, move towards a more normal uh, kind of kind of credit cost. We have talked about 60 to 80 basis points, which is lower than our long-term average. We don't know where it will finally end up, but you know some of the costs which you're seeing right now are at historical lows. And as a bank, we are in the risk-taking business. So for us to hope that this will continue, I think it will be a bit unfair because we are also growing on the credit side at a reasonable pace. So I would say 60 to 80 basis points is more the number we should be looking at rather than where we are today over a period of time. Let's see how much time it gets there. It takes to get Okay. There. Well, anyway, it's a cracker set of numbers. Many congratulations. And here's wishing you and everyone at Access and your team a very happy Diwali. Thank you so much, Lata. Always a pleasure. Okay. Well, uh, that's the word from the big man from Axis. They are keeping their eyes really wide open for any signs, but uh, very ambitious on growth and on asset quality. Wrap up on Bazaar on that note. Chartbusters up next.